Hi there, and welcome to another Alice tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to look at a little bit more work on dummy objects. So consider this example here. We've got a pool table, and we want to move the balls around. But how can we actually tell where the pockets are and where the, the side cushions are and so forth? Now, if we look at our pool table itself, there's no sub-objects, so we've got a table object, which defines the overall table. But there's no objects which define such things as the pockets and the side cushions. So we don't have an exact position for those. So what I'm going to do here is use dummy objects to represent positions of those important, important objects. So today I'll look at using a dummy object to represent the position of this side pocket here. So to do that, what I'm going to do firstly is click on Effect Subparts, so then I can move and control this cue ball here. So I click on the, the arrow and I'll move move it over to the position of the pocket. And let's just be a little bit careful of the orientation of this. So we want to orient the cue ball, uh, we'll call the methods here, orient to the overall table. Okay, so that has the cue ball now facing out to the right, right here and facing upwards and its forward position is facing along this direction here along this side cushion. So what I'm going to do here is click then on more controls and drop a dummy object at the cue ball. So now I have a dummy object dropped at the position of the cue ball. So I can use this now as a reference point. So then I'm going to click back on our cue ball, move it back into the position here and there we have it. So I click on the dummy object. Now a couple of things to note about the dummy object here. A few things that may be a little bit confusing. So again if I click on the dummy object uh, and I need to click on open that up on the dummy object. You notice here that dummy object is defined by these or the, the size of the dummy object is defined by these three thicker lines here. So we've got the red line, which actually matches with the red or the right directional line, which is good. But a little bit confusingly here is our thick blue line matches up with the green or the up position, which probably a bit of a oversight of the Alice uh, programmers and so forth. So, so something you need to be a little bit aware of. It certainly caused a bit of confusion. Now the other thing to note here is the size of this area. So we need to be mindful of that when we do positioning. So let's move on and we'll get rep return to that point in a moment. So what I can do here is start thinking about the position of the white cue ball relative to this dummy object. So if we go over here and I'll click on the one ball, sorry the cue ball, and I'm just going to print out some information. So if I print out Let's just chuck in anything for now. I want to print out the distance of the cue ball to the right of this dummy object. To the right of our dummy object. Let's just play that now. And you see here that we actually get a negative number. Now we'd think here if we're actually trying to calculate the distance to the right of the pocket here, we should get a positive number, but we're not. So what's going on here? Well, the reason for that is, as I said earlier, let's expand on this again, this dummy object is actually defined by these dark lines. So the position to the, the rightmost part of this dummy object is actually over here. So if we look at the cue ball, this position to the right of that is actually back in this negative direction. So there's a couple of ways we can overcome that problem. So let's have a look at the first way. first way would be to change this to the distance to the left of. Print that out. And that will actually determine the distance from here to here, but in the negative direction. So it's actually going to be negative just under 0.7 metres. So we can use that. But better still, again we'll click on the add objects, is to resize this dummy object. So again if we click on that, go through our methods here, if we resize, make it half as big, 
Now let's keep on shrinking it. Uh, oops, we need to click on dummy object again. Let's keep on shrinking that until it's of a fairly minimal size. So half again. And let's do it a couple more times. And shrink it once more. And we may even do it just a single single time more. So now we've got a very small dummy object. So that position of this red uh, red, red, uh, thick red line here is not going to count for very much at all. So I click done on again. Now if we go back here and change that to the distance to the right of, click on play, now we've got a positive, positive number again, which is what we're after. We could shrink it down a little bit more to get a more precise number, but for now that will give us a fairly good bearing. So, how can we use all that information? Well, let's suppose I want to be able to move the white ball into this side pocket here. So to do that, what I want to do is move the ball forward and to the left at the same time. So that suggests we're going to use it do together. And we want to go back and click on our cue ball. And we want to move the cue ball forward. And I'll put in a default value for now. And at the same time, we want to move the cue ball to the left. And again, we'll put in a default value. Now, what do we need to use? Well, we need to move the cue ball to the left, that distance we calculated here, i.e. the distance to the right of the dummy. So, let's copy that using a clipboard, drag that into there. And... The distance we need to move forward is the distance behind this dummy object. So again, we'll go over to here and we'll use the distance behind function and distance behind the dummy object. So let's see what happens there. So we're pretty good, we're a little bit out, so we actually need to move it a little bit further because remember we're moving, we're measuring from the middle of the cue ball. So let's make a slight adjustment here. We'll add default value and we'll add the width of the cue ball here. And similarly we'll, we'll do add a default value and again add the width of the cue ball. Let's see how we go there. And we're pretty good, we're going a little bit too far forward. So it should really be half the width of the cue ball. So we'll divide that by two. And similarly for this one here, we'll divide that one by two as well. Okay, so let's see how we go. And we're pretty well, pretty well spot on. Now the slight error we had was still probably to do with the fact that our dummy object was still a little bit bigger than what it should have been. So let's go back into there. Click on our dummy object. Let's make it a little bit smaller still. And let's resize, let's cut that down by half again. So you can see it's very small now. Click on done. Play that. And we're pretty well right over the top of our, our pocket. So when that happens, uh, let's go back over to our cue balls methods. And we'll get the cue ball to move down. Let's say half a metre. We'll get it to do it fairly quickly. Duration of a quarter of a second. And there we have it. So fairly accurate positioning now. Now the point is, is if we go back over to here, I should be able to move, oops, effect subparts. Let's move this. I'll undo that again. We want to move it freely. Let's move it over over there and play again. And see, we've still got a fairly fairly accurate. Restart that accurate potting going on there. Now slight improvements needed again but we're getting pretty close to what we're, what we're after. Okay hopefully that's been useful. I hope you'll tune in for the next next tutorial on Alice. Okay bye.